Good morning, New Beginnings. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. So what we're going to do this morning, praise God, is our New Beginnings. What we do, we call it a pre-service prayer. Amen. We like to pray to our Father before we start our service. Amen. As we enter into his throne. Amen. Psalms 104 tells us to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his wonderful name. So if you would, just stand to your feet this morning as we get ready to pray. Praise God. Just stand to your feet if you can. If you're able to stand to your feet, let's stand to our feet as we get ready to pray. Uh, let's pray. Father, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Father God, we come to you this day, Father God, asking you for your grace and your mercy and your wonderful name and the wonderful name of your son, Jesus Christ, Father God. We are coming to you today. Father God. Number one, Father God, because we need you, Father God, right now in our lives, Father God. And we just thank you right now, Father God, for this opportunity to enter to your gates, Father God. Just a privilege to be in your house, Father God. We just want to say thank you for that this morning, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we just bless your name. Your praise shall continuously be in all of our mouths, Father God, because you are good and you are God. And we just thank you, Father God, for your protection, how you kept us all this week, Father God. You kept us and you you gave us our many needs, Father God. We didn't lack nothing this week, Father God, and we just give your name glory, honor, and praise for that in the name of Jesus. Father God, this is the confidence that we have in you, Father God, that we ask anything according to your will, Father God. We know that you hear us, Father God, and since we know that you hear us, Father God, what's that we ask? We want to just come before you today, Father God, because we have needs, Father God. We have things before you right now, Father God. Each and every one of us, Father God, have something different that is going on in our lives, Father God, but we're coming together collectively, Father God, coming to you because you are our provider, Father God. Father God, your word tells us to supplicate and offer all manner of prayer and intercession for all men and all those that are in authority, Father God. So right now, Father God, we pray for this great nation, Father God. Father God, we're praying for all men, all kings, all those that are in authority, Father God. Father God, we pray that your anointing be upon all the leaders of the United Nations, the European Commonwealth, Israel, the Middle East, and the United States of America, Father God. Father God, we ask that you bless our president, Father God. We ask that you bless our vice president, Lord God, all the senators, all the congressmen, all the governors, all the mayors, all those that are in authority right now, Father God. We're just praying that you just keep your hand on them, Lord God. Father God, we declare that this nation is blessed because you are the God over it, and we are the people that you have chosen for your inheritance, Father God. Father God, we believe that all powers are subject to you, Father God. Father God, we believe that you have control, Father God, and we're praying that you just help them to make the right decisions, Father God, that this nation doesn't go astray, Father God. Help them make the right decisions, Father God, that they may guide this nation, Father God. Therefore, when the righteous are in authority, Father God, we know that the righteous shall rejoice, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we release the truth into every realm of life, that men may say that surely this nation is blessed because you are the God over this nation, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray right now, Lord God, for all the ministry and gifts that you have set in place in the church, Father God. All the pastors, all the teachers, all the prophets, all the evangelists, Father God, all the teachers, Father God. We're praying right now for every ministry and gift, Father God, that they may go forward in the gift that you have placed in them, Father God, and that we may receive the mature guidance that they give to us, Father God, that we may grow up and to be, your, be in the image of your son, Jesus Christ, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you for every ministry and gift. And most importantly, Father God, we thank you right now for the gift that you have given us here at New Beginnings Christian Life Center, Father God. We thank you for our pastors here, Father God, Pastor Kevin and Pastor Leslie Wright, Father God. We're praying right now a special blessing over their lives, Father God, but not just them, Father God their whole entire family, Father God. We plead the blood of Jesus over them and everyone in their household, Father God. All their families, all their relatives, Father God. We're just thanking you right now, Father God, for just giving us pastors after your very own heart, Father God, that they may teach us your word, Father God, that we may grow up and be in 
in the image of your son, Jesus Christ, Father God, we declare that they and their families are protected by the blood of Jesus from all hurt, harm, and danger. Father God, we praise you for doing abundantly above all that we are praying for according to the power that worketh mightily in us, Father God. We just give your name praise, Father God, for people that care for your people, Father God. Oh, Lord God, we just thank you right now for those that you have set in place, Lord God, here at New Beginnings. And we just give your name glory, honor, and praise. Father God, we declare that Jesus is Lord over them. In Jesus' name, we shout amen. amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, we do this every Sunday, praise God. If y'all new to New Beginnings, I want to introduce you to what we're about to do now. We do this, we call our confessions. We confess things here at New Beginnings, praise God. We continue to speak it and speak it and speak it. And I want you all to repeat after me today. Amen? Amen. Can y'all repeat after me this morning? Amen. Amen. We are by their believers at New Beginnings Christian Life Center. We are 500 strong, going forth to possess the land of Byron, Mississippi, and the surrounding areas. We are doers of the word of God and not just hearers only. We are what the Word of God says that we are, and we can do what the Word of God says that we can do. We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and we are reigning as kings in the earth. Master, we thank you that we are not tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine. We speak the truth in love, and we are maturing in the things of God. We declare that we are the healed and not the sick. We have a sound mind, and we have a sound body. Now shout hallelujah. We are energized, revitalized, transformed, renewed powerhouses for God. We plead the blood of Jesus over our bodies, and we declare that the healing power of God continuously surrounds us, keeps us, and preserves our entire system. Father, we thank you that every household of New Beginnings Christian Life Center is blessed and living under an open heaven. The blessings of the Lord makes us rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. The blessings of the Lord makes us rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. We are increasing more and more, and wealth and riches are in our house. We are the head and not the tail, above only and never beneath. We are the lenders and not the borrowers. We are sowing bountifully, and we are reaping a bountiful harvest on every seed that we sow. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we keep confessing, and we keep confessing, and we keep saying, and we keep saying, and guess what God does? He do it. Amen? I remember we was confessing and confessing, we're going to get a brand new church, and guess what God did? Hallelujah! He answered, amen. So y'all just keep confessing that throughout the week. Praise God. Now let's pray, amen, for the lost today, Father God. Let's pray this morning for the lost. Father God, we come before you right now, Lord God, praying right now for those that are lost, Father God. Father God, your word tells us to supplicate, supplicate and offer all manner of prayer and intercession and giving the thanks for all men. 
So right now, Father God, we lift up the loss before you today, Father God. Father God, there's someone out there right now, Lord God, that is just lost, Lord God. But we're praying right now, Lord God, that you send forth spirit-filled believers, Father God, today that may come across their path, Father God. Today, Lord God, give them the opportunity to hear the gospel, Father God, whether it be through social media, through our Facebook, whether they come through the doors, whether they, they, they walking down the street and they hear something, somebody playing on the radio, but Lord God, we're praying right now that the, that the lost have the opportunity to make Jesus their Lord. Father God, every man, every woman, every child from here to the farthest corners of the earth, Father God, Father God said that you are the Lord of the harvest, Father God. So right now, Lord God, send forth your people before them, Lord God, that they may hear the word and not just hear it, Father God. Let them present the gospel in a special way, Father God, that they will not only hear it, Father God, but they will understand in the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray that they will not be able to resist the drawing of the Holy Spirit, Father God. Let the Holy Spirit tug on them, Father God, until they just let go, hallelujah, and say, what must I do to receive Jesus? Hallelujah. Father God, we all may have someone in our families, Father God, some of our loved ones that may be lost, Father God. We're praying wherever they are, whatever state they're in, Father God. They may be in Chicago. They may be in Texas, Father God, but we're praying for our loved ones that somebody, hallelujah, will come across that path and present the gospel to them, Father God. We, we intercede our faith, or we exercise our faith this morning, Father God, that the blind scales from their eyes may fall, Father God, and they can see, hallelujah, they can see and they can re receive and taste your goodness, Father God, and then they will go forth and do the same thing, Father God. And right now, Father God, we're praying for our service here today, Father God. We're praying that the Holy Spirit have his way in this service, Father God. We're praying for each and every person on the praise team, Father God, that as the praises go up, Father God, the blessings come down, Father God. As they sing today, Father God, let everyone in this congregation today, Father God, lift up their voices and sing too, Father God, because you are deserving of all of our praise, Father God. You are deserving of all of our worship today, Father God. So today, Father God, hallelujah, let the Holy Spirit burn in us, Father God, that we may lift you up, Father God, because you said if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me, Father God. So we're going to lift your name up, Father God, because you are good and you are worthy today, Father God. Hallelujah. So I know our pastor today, Father God, that when he get up to minister, Father God, hallelujah, that the Spirit, hallelujah, just speak through him, Father God, that we may hear the word, Father God, and that we will, our lives will be changed like never before, Father God. So right now, Lord God, as we get ready to lift your name up in praise, we just want to shout to the, to the mountaintop, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. glory to God, hallelujah. hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Psalms 122 says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Somebody say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. God makes us happy. Hallelujah. We're going to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to lift our voices this morning. We invite you to enter in to praise and worship with us. New beginnings. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We enter into your gates with thanksgiving. We enter into your courts with praise. We're thankful unto you, and we bless your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, lift up your voices. We praise you, God. We bless your holy name. There is none like you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It's a blessing to be here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We thank you, Lord, you make us happy.
love you, God. You've been so good to us, Father. We love you forever. Somebody say, we love you, God, forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we love you, Lord, with all of our hearts, with all of our mind, with all of our strength. We love you, Jesus.
up this morning. It started me on my way. magnify your name, O oh Lord God. You are great. You are worthy of all praise. Hallelujah to your name. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We worship you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The song that was worshiped today says, we love you, O oh Lord. We give glory to your name. Hallelujah to his great name. In the Old Testament, glory means that God is great. We are giving God glory for the greatness of who he is. In the New Testament, we are giving him dignity and honor and splendor and praise. Hallelujah. When you put those two together, we worship and we praise God, giving his name glory and honor. Because of who he is, there is no one greater than he is. Now let's just together lift our hands again as they began to sing that song one more time. One more time, we give glory and honor and praise unto his name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. this morning. Hallelujah. If you, I pray that you are not bashful about worshiping God. Hallelujah. How I many of you know somebody didn't wake up this morning? Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you have breath in you today, we ought to praise him. Hallelujah. Every day we wake up, it's another opportunity to worship him and to praise him and to glorify him and to magnify him to exalt him hallelujah that's one more day of love that he gave each of us to open up our mouths and to praise and glorify him oh we worship you today hallelujah to your great name oh we love you we love you lord hallelujah Glory to God, where you may be seated this morning in his presence. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We thank him this morning. Hallelujah. We're so excited to see all of you here this morning. Amen. Praise God to have you to come out and, and worship today. Praise the Lord to uh, not only just to uh, worship, but to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. We have just a few announcements, amen, that we'd like to bring to your attention. Uh, first of all, we want you to know that uh, our next in-person service, amen, is going to be in September. 
Amen. And effectively in September, we will be having church every Sunday. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every Sunday at 11 o'clock a.m. Amen. We invite you to come out and worship with us. Invite your friends and your family uh, to come. Amen. And to worship with us. Because I tell you, yeah, we've been on Facebook Live and amen. That's good. That's good to be on Facebook Live, but it's nothing like being in the presence of the, uh, of, of the body of Christ because the Bible says that we are fitly joined together. Amen. We are compacted. Amen. So being in the presence of God is so very important. And so every Sunday we will be having in September, beginning September the 4th, our in-person uh, service. Invite you to come out and be a part of that. Also in September, amen, uh, we will be uh, returning to our growth track. Now, well, let me tell you a little bit about growth track. That is our membership class, amen. So we uh, will be conducting membership class for all of those who have responded and uh, have inquired about becoming a member here at the church. You know, when you uh, uh, raise your hand and you respond to altar call, it doesn't automatically make you a member. What you have to do is find out what you're joining. Amen. Praise God. So we will be having membership classes beginning uh, in September on September the 4th. Amen. Praise God. So if you are have already inquired about being a member and you even today you have that opportunity come out uh, beginning September uh, the 4th. It will be a membership class every Sunday from 10 o'clock a.m. to 1130. Amen. You can get your membership uh, classes uh, get uh, involved. Now we had yesterday, uh, we had our Ministry of Helps training. Glory to God. Oh my goodness, it was so impactful. We had such a wonderful time. And some of our new members, I mean, the ones that were inquiring about becoming a member, they came to that. So after you get your membership class, you're going to jump right in. Amen. You already, you don't have to wait around. Oh, to take that class, I already got it. Because Pastor Wright opened that up. Amen. For you, I believe that was the favor of God because you usually have to wait. Glory to God, but you didn't have to wait. God is doing great things, amen. But also, uh, I'd like to also uh, let you know that we, uh, the men, how many men do we have in here today? Okay, I hear you, I hear you, you hear, amen. Oh, iron sharpens iron, men breakfast, amen. Praise God, that's going to be Saturday, September 24th at 10 o'clock a.m., all the men supporters come out and be a part of this iron sharpened iron breakfast amen you're going to get the word of god for your spirit but you're also going to get camaraderie uh, between the brothers amen praise god and that iron your iron is going to sharpen somebody else's iron amen i hope you don't forget about that iron when you start eating all this stuff right here <laughs> amen because that looks good doesn't it amen but ladies you and I, we are not left out. Flip. Woo! Fresh manna. Come on now. Now, they, they didn't say fresh manna. <laughs> but we got fresh bread. Amen. Now, uh, hey, man, this is going to be uh, also October 22nd at 10 o'clock a.m. with Pastor Leslie. Ladies, you don't want to miss that. The theme is the mind, 3 John 2. Uh, God wants us to prosper even as our soul prosper. So uh, invite ladies, invite somebody, bring somebody with you. We want to fill this place up, amen. Brothers, invite somebody uh, to come with you. Praise God. Now, I already said that I'm going to, I have one son that lives here in Mississippi. He's my baby boy. Praise God. And I said, I'm inviting him to come to this. Amen. And invite some of his buddies to come because men need this. Amen. They need that camaraderie. So come out and be a part of that. Amen. Praise God. That uh, does not include, I started to say include, uh, uh, on this uh, Thursday, August the 18th, our mobile missions will be going back to our senior apartments uh, to deliver bags of grocery. Amen. 
this is your opportunity. If you'd like to donate something and you'd like to have the list, see me after service. I'll make sure that you get that list in so that you can donate. And make sure a senior gets some groceries at the end of the month. Amen. Praise God. I hear that. That's right. Absolutely. Glory to God. Some of you have already donated. You brought stuff in. My office is filling up. I don't even want to get in there. I'm going to have to have somebody come bring it all out so I can get in. So we can take that uh, uh, to the seniors. And then on Wednesday, uh, before Thursday, if you'd like to help put some bags together, meet me here at the church at 10 o'clock a.m. on Wednesday. We're going to be putting those grocery bags together. Amen. I used to do them at my house in my living room. And my grandbaby, she helped me out. Baby, she had everything in there. But uh, I, we're doing it at the church now. So give you an opportunity to come out and help with that at 10 o'clock a.m. to make those grocery bags up. But last but not le least, at Gary Rhodes Elementary School here in Byron, we are doing what we call Stock the Teacher's Closet. Amen. Praise God. They have uh, 70 employees. I think it's about 50 or so teachers. We are stocking the teacher's closet with typing paper, pencils, pens, erasers uh, for those children that uh, may not have that when they come to school. So if you'd like to donate, just bring that with you on September the 4th or call me. Amen. And I'll have a location. I'm not going to come to each of your house to get it. But I will have a location where you can meet me and bring that because we want to make sure that they get what they, uh, they need. And then on the second Sunday in September, the principal of Gary Rose Elementary School will be here to receive your donation. Amen. Praise God. So uh, be mindful of that when you go out to shop, pick up something, amen, and bring and be a blessing. Because we don't have an outreach department, but we live lives of reaching out. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now I'd like to welcome those of you who are joining us this morning by Facebook Live. Welcome to New Beginnings. Amen. And those of you, you who are here in the sanctuary, we'd like to welcome you this, uh, this morning. If you are a first-time guest, please stand so that we can recognize you. You're visiting with us for the first time. Please stand. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, glory. Come on, you guys. You can do better than that. Amen. Praise God. We're so happy to have you visit with us this morning. Amen. Please remain standing. I won't have you stand for long. Uh, what you have received is a guest information packet. Open that up and just look inside. It's an official welcome from our pastors, Pastor Kevin and Leslie Wright, amen. Also in there is a little note card. We're going to ask you to complete that in, in its entirety because this tells us about who you are and where you have come from. And then we are going to call you back and thank you again for coming out and welcome, uh, coming out and being with us in our service today. But there are... Uh, we used to sing a song. I was almost about to say that, but we want to thank you for coming out and visiting with us and invite you to come back at your earliest convenience. Once you fill out that card, drop it in the offering receptacle uh, as you go by. Amen. Let's give them another hand. You may be seated. Amen. Praise God. And okay, praise God. Well, we have a, a very special uh, injection into our service today. Somebody is celebrating 40 years of being married. Amen. Pastor Wright and Pastor Leslie, we're going to invite Pastor to come up at this time. Amen. Let's give them a hand. Glory to God. 40 years. Hallelujah. First lady, where is she? Where's the first lady? Amen. She coming? Come on, First Lady, let's give that 40 year drive. Come on in the room, amen. Praise God, we're so excited and so happy. Amen, as we celebrate with you. What a testament, amen. Praise God, hallelujah, glory to God. Amen, praise the Lord. Oh, there they go now. <laughs> Well,
Well, girl, this has been 40 years. Y'all may be seated. Thank y'all. Now, y'all do realize we got married back when we were, what, 12? <laughs> Amen. Praise God. In fact, 40 years of being married, and then I turned 60, and she'll be turning 60 in October. So, and, and so what's that, 60, 40, right? So what is that, 100? Look at some of y'all trying to calculate it, right? 60 plus 40. But, girl, it's been wonderful years, I tell you. You are truly a blessing to me. Uh, you've taught me how to love. You've taught me how to do a whole lot of different things, you know. And I grew up the only, well, the youngest child, selfish. You know, I was not even old little kid. Uh, but when I met you, I knew it. I said, oh, that girl, I'm going to marry that girl. And here it is, what, 40 years later? And I know God's going to bless us with another 40 years. So if we're 60... What, another 40 will make us, what, 100? <laughs> Boy, wouldn't that be something? We'd be up here celebrating. Well, I want y'all to know we've been married. <laughs> and what, 80 years? <clears throat> Girl, I'm all choked up. I love you dearly. And uh, we can't do nothing this week, but we're going to be doing it next week. We ain't getting into why we can't do it this week, because that's not proper right here, is it? <laughs> No, we want to leave that alone, right? <laughs> we got to wait till next week. Uh, she's getting a, 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 a job done. <laughs> yeah, she got a little work to get done, but uh, we'll do it the following week. Figure we go to the Gulf Coast. It's been a day or two, you know, and, and we just came back from Michigan for two weeks. I, nah, let's just do a couple of days, and uh, next time around, we're going to do something on a whole nother scale. There's been so much happening this year. From this new building, I mean, believing God for a $1.7 million building, and it's just been a lot going on, and the pandemic, and it just been a whole lot going on, so we thought we'd just wait a minute and, and when the time is right, but I hear somebody saying, the time ain't never right, Bishop, you just got to go on out there and do what you're going to do, but uh, honey, you're precious to me, your daddy's precious little girl. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord, we, we. <laughs> we got two grandkids and one on the way. Let me get another kiss for that. Let's see. <laughs> and then look at the building. Look what God has done. Let's get another kiss for that one. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> Ooh, my let, me, let me just say, uh, one word comes to my mind when you think about the Lord and our being married for 50 years is faithful. God is faithful. And I'm telling you, just to see what he has done through our lives since we were teenagers. Uh, 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 we went to, we graduated from Mumford High School, the Mumford High School. Y'all need me to act like you know it. But anyway, <laughs> we graduated from Mumford High School in Detroit. And the first time I laid eyes on this fine thing right here. Uh, just okay, just keep it moving, but I'm going to say this part. Was in the 10th grade in Mr. DeBush's class. I said, now that's fine. And he was saying the same thing about me. I didn't know it, though. I was shy. I was sitting in the back, but he would pass by, and I was like, Lord, look at that. I wasn't saying, I wasn't saved at the time. It probably wasn't Lord, I said. <laughs> <laughs> but but look what God did. He brought us together and when five five children later. Two and a half grand stuff. <laughs> look what God has done. And how many spiritual children we got. Oh my God. He told me on our first date, he told me that was in uh, June of 1980. I'm a historian. I'll just, I won't be, I'll be here a long time. But June, <laughs> June of 1980, we went on a trip. I mean, not, not a trip. No, you went on a date. You came up to my, where I worked at Hughes and Hatcher's in the men's clothing. And he asked me on a date and I couldn't talk. I said, but have y'all ever been there before? We, well, anyway, and so he took me on a date and, and, and he told me, he said, Leslie, he said, I want to, he said, I want to show you the hidden treasures in your heart. I want to take you on adventures that you have never gone before. 
I want to do, I want to spend my life with you. And I'm thinking, what the world? And you've done that and some. Yeah. We've been on many adventures, accomplished much together. We've been through the, on the mountaintop and in the valley, but we've been together. Been and together. that's the way it's going to stay. That's in it. Jesus' name. Another kiss for that one. Now, you know, we've been, uh, we've been to the Holy Land, Israel, and we've been to the motherland, Africa. So I didn't took her, boy, we didn't been, been Mexico, we have been all over the place. Uh, yeah, Bulgaria, well, no, you didn't come with me when I went to Bulgaria. And I think that the Lord, uh, the Lord has so much more. Now you know that we'll be, uh, he's 60, I'm turning 60. Now we really know what we're doing. You know what I'm saying? How many how many y'all got a little bit of age on you? Now you say, now nah, I really know what I'm doing. Uh, now I think I know what I'm doing. Uh -huh, now. Uh -huh. So we really time. got a lot oh, that God is going to do with us and through us and through all of you all too. And so we just uh, thank y'all for helping us to celebrate today our anniversary. We'll be going out of town tomorrow because I have a, a colonoscopy on Wednesday. We won't be going. We, we, we won't be going. We'll be going out of town next weekend. I have a colonoscopy on Wednesday. Anybody ever had one of them? That's the best sleep you could ever have. And, 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 we'll leave that alone. And so you got to fast. <laughs> so you have to fast and everything. So I was like, I ain't going nowhere and I got to be fasting. So we're going to wait until to, uh, to go on that uh, to do that. But uh, uh, it's been wonderful. It is wonderful. And it's going to continue better. to be it's wonderful. Uh, the, 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 the song that keeps coming through to my head. What song is that? Y'all ready for me to sing it? Oh, Jesus. I ain't going to do it. But <laughs> <laughs> I love you more today than yesterday. Our love continues to grow. Oh, my. And, see, and the song that y'all know I love to sing that really got us going. What's that guy's name, the singer? Um, James Ingram, that's right. Uh, yeah, there you go, that's right. <laughs> Find 100 Ways. Some of you older folk, you understand that song, yeah, that, that. Ooh, Lord Jesus. Oh, y'all playing it. Oh, nah. Uh, <laughs> gotta turn that around. <laughs> Boy, I love that song. See, people don't sing like they used to sing. Now it's just a lot of, a lot of noise, isn't it? But that James Ingram could take you there. He was like Luther Vandross. Come on now. What's some more of them other guys? Hey, 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 no. the older people, guy. Bryson. people Bryson, all them guys. Boy, they had them dogs can sing. I say. Oh no! I you did, did you? I, I ain't too much care for Stevie, but no. Uh, yeah, yeah. I I liked Isaac Hayes. Uh, Marvin Gaye. All them guys. Now yeah. there you go, Marvin. Marvin. <laughs> <laughs> well, honey, I got some flowers for you, and you know we gonna do some more things next week. So if you'll just bring those flowers over here, and you need to take a look at them. Yeah, yeah how you like that? Yeah, that's beautiful. I like that. That's, that's nice there, girl. That's, boy, how many, what was that? 20, 24 roses. 24, well, I get 24 what from you? I, I just tease it, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Praise God. So thank you guys so much. Hey, guys, it's been a wonderful 40 years. What a blessing. That's right. We started dating. That was two years prior, so it's been 42 years. Yeah, we ain't been apart. Nope, nope. It's just been beautiful. That's just great, I tell you. We still chase each other, and, and, and she she run a little bit. Now, now, he call himself running in the house away from me. Now, watch. Look the way he be running. Hold on. Yeah, I tell you, y'all first lady, see something else, Lord, pray for her. Father, we stretch our hands toward her. <laughs> hey, I'll be faster than this. Yes, oh boy. Oh, let's move right along there. Praise the Lord. Now let's welcome our 
dynamic anointed music ministry. Let's get back in the spirit. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. It's hard to come uh, after that right there, Pastor. It's pretty hard, but uh, <laughs> I'm going to try. We're going to try. Hallelujah. We are so blessed to have our pastor and first lady. Give them a round of applause. We love you guys. Hallelujah. In Isaiah 43, chapter 5, it says, God says, fear not, for I am with you. Hallelujah. We want to encourage you today. Don't know what you're going through, but we want you to know that God will make a way when there is no way. Hallelujah. I want to read this right here to you all. One second. Glory, hallelujah, hallelujah. See, the devil don't want me to say this, but hold on. This is good, but you got to have it in your heart. It's got to be in here. Hallelujah. It said, God says he'll make a way. He says when you pass through the water, you won't be overtaken. When the floods come, they won't over cover you up. Hallelujah. And when the flames start burning, the fire won't burn you up. Hallelujah. It says the, fire, the flames will not kindle upon you. Hallelujah. Because he has made a way. Hallelujah. That's Isaiah 43, verse 2. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has made a way out of no way. Don't know how, but you did it, Lord. But you did it, Lord. Ooh. When thou passest through the waters, he said, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overtake thee. And when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Somebody say, we won't even be burned. Hallelujah. Neither shall the flames kindle upon thee. For I am thy Lord, the Holy One of Israel. He's our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless your name, Jesus. Thank you, Father. You matter to God. Somebody say, I matter to God. I matter to God. I matter to God. back 
grateful today. Come on now. Don't know why I'm grateful. Everybody that got a voice. Come on, sing it out. Don't know why I'm grateful. I mean, y'all are grateful. Don't know why, but I'm grateful. Has he been better to you than you've been to yourself? Come on. Don't know why I'm grateful. Has God been good to you? Come on. He's been good. He's been good for a long time. I could have been sleeping in my grave, but I'm grateful. I got up three o'clock this morning. One of our old members died this morning. And I looked, and as we got there at the hospital, Baptist Hospital, we got another soldier going home with the Lord. But I said, I don't know how, but I'm grateful that I could have been sleeping on my cooling board, but I'm still here. <laughs> I said, I'm still here. Don't know how, but I'm grateful. <laughs> could have been dead a long time ago. Don't know why, but I'm grateful. I didn't have to be here today. But somehow I know I'm grateful. Oh, we're so grateful to be here today. You look back at all the people that died from COVID. Don't know how, but I'm grateful. Just glad to be here today. Just glad to be in the house of God. I'd rather be a doorkeeper. <laughs> I don't know why. But I'm grateful. Sometimes you got to look within yourself and just say thank you. The saints of old used to say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. When I was a kid, I didn't quite understand what was in that thank you, Jesus. But you keep on saying thank you, Jesus. I can hear them old deacons. Thank you, Jesus. It was something in that thank you, Jesus. We were little kids, so we didn't understand all that. They told us just say thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Won't you try it? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Then you speed it up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus in the morning. Thank you, Lord. Jesus at noonday. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus at night. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I dare you to say thank you, Jesus. I dare you to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Some of y'all scared to say it. I double dog dare you to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord. Boy, we used to have some services back there. Just don't say thank you, Jesus. Come on now. That's when we didn't have a lot of instruments in that. Just thank you, Jesus. It just start out slow, you know. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, so you learn how to say it and mix it up, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some of y'all scared. Don't, don't be afraid. Let the Lord touch you. You know, we used to say, let the Lord touch you. Let the Lord use you, you know. Then we go into that and have testimony service. And somebody will stand up and say, I just want to say thank you, Jesus. Oh, we had a service. <laughs> thank, you. thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you Jesus. Thank you. thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you in the morning. Thank you, thank you at noonday. Thank you, thank you at night. Thank you. All ye that have breath. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You've been so good to me. Thank you, Lord. I got shelter over my head. Thank you, Jesus. You healed my body. Told me to run on. Thank you, Jesus. Should have been dead, sleeping in my grave. But you've been so good. You've been better than good. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. That's how we had church. <laughs> Over that God. Whoa. And somebody would step up and say, My Lord getting us ready for that great day. Y'all don't know nothing about all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who shall be a bold stain? Y'all don't remember that song? Lord, help me. Oh, Lord. Somebody would step up and just mess the whole thing up. I'm running for my life. <laughs> running for your life. If anybody asks you, what's the matter with me? Just tell them I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized. I got Jesus on my, and I'm running for the life. <laughs> Woo, we had some church. It might not have been scriptural, but Lord, it sounded right, you know. <laughs> oh. 
And then somebody would get up and mess up the whole audience. I wonder who that person was that sang, Tis So Sweet. Y'all know I ain't going to sing it, so... Every day, 
every day, every day, trusting you more, trust you more. Oh, every day, every day, in every way, every way, I gotta trust you more, gotta learn to trust him. Every day, every day, I trust you more. Every way and everything, God, I'm trusting you. Yeah, leaning not unto my own understanding, but trusting you more. Yeah, not trying to handle it. thank you today. Lord, we learn to trust you more and more. Yeah, we trust you in good times, but even more in bad times. Father, you told us to trust in you. Lean not your own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge you, and you would direct our path. So, Father, we thank you that as we delve into your word, that your word will come alive to us. Father, we thank you for the great teacher among us, the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, lead us and guide us into all truth. Thank you, Lord. I'll not miss to the left nor to the right, but I'll follow your perfect will. And Father, we just thank you today for uh, the praise and worship team. And thank you for special music. And Lord, we just thank you for what you have wrought in our midst and what you shall continue to do among us. And Lord, we covenant with you in advance to give you all of the glory, honor, and praise for what shall be revealed through your holy written word or through gifts of the spirit we thank you today in jesus name amen hallelujah well you may be seated man i can bask in that see you get into that and then you just go right into the glory cloud hallelujah turn with me to first peter chapter two. First peter chapter two last week i was unable to minister well i did minister but we ministered to our young people Amen. I just kind of felt led of the Lord just to minister to all our young people, those who are in school, those who are returning back to school, whether it's, you know, kindergarten, elementary, junior high, high school, college. And, and so we just spent a little time encouraging and edifying and building up our young people. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, you know, I, I tell you, I believe in teaching the word. I mean, that's the stock I come from, a word church. So I believe that God's word ought to be preeminent. It ought to have preeminence in our lives. That simply means that it ought to have first place. Glory to God. But we are not just a word church, but we are a Holy Ghost church. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I believe in just flowing, just going with the flow. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So let's go there to 1 Peter chapter 2. I was going to minister something different today. But the Holy Ghost, amen, uh, the worship team, you touched my message. You touched my message. You matter to God. I believe one of y'all said, you matter to God. That's right. I said, well, look at here. You better get out of here. I said, why? God, I, I changed it at, kind of at the last minute, and it was you matter to God. Okay, then the worship leader gets up here and says, I want you to know something that you matter to God. 
You see how you go with the Holy Ghost? You just follow the Holy Ghost. Because why the Holy Ghost can get more done in two minutes than it take you two years trying to figure something out. So you got to learn how to follow the Holy Ghost. First Peter chapter 2. Amen. Praise God. And we're going to take a look there at verse 9. Our subject for today is you matter to God. You matter to God. First Peter chapter 2. And verse 9, it says, but you are, talking about those who are the born-again believers, those who name the name of Christ, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Look at who you are. Did you hear me? Look at who you are. You are somebody when you are in Christ. You're not a nobody. You are a somebody. He said, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, not strange, but a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Now, let me make sure here. I thought I might have had that in a, yeah, I did. In another translation, actually, the message translation, and it just simply renders more clarification. First Peter chapter 2 and, and verse 9 said, but you are the ones chosen by God. We're talking about you. Amen. I said, hallelujah, you matter to God. And we're going to spend this time, you know, the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, so that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we're going to build you up, praise God. You matter. Why? Because there are a lot of believers who do not believe that they matter. They're insecure. Huh? You got too many believers who are insecure and they think they're so unworthy. It's not that we're worthy within ourselves, but when we get in Christ, come on, we are the righteousness of God in Christ. How I many of you know that we look a whole lot better in Christ than we do out of Christ? There's a, a change that takes place when we get in Christ. Therefore, if any man be where? In Christ, he is a new creature. One translation said, a new species of being that never existed before. We're talking about you today. We're going to build you up. So I'm going to give you multiple scriptures so that you can find out who you are. We don't need the body of Christ. We don't need believers, church folk, those who are born again, walking around with their head down. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen but Jesus. Oh, I'm going nowhere to happen. I'm just some old poor weak worm of the dust. Live next door to Grumble Alley. I'm never going to become anything. Lowly me. It just sounds wrong, don't it? Why do people go into those cantics, you know, or antics? You know, they start saying, I'm nobody, nobody loves me. Their voice changed. I don't know why, but no. You matter. Say with me, I matter. I matter. This time, put your name in there, but don't say my name. I'm going to say it first, then you put your name in. Kevin matters. You say, yes. I'm going to count to three, and you put your name in there. One, two, three. Yes. Okay, this time, say it like you mean it. One, two, three. Yes. Again. Yes. Some of y'all ain't talking, so I'm not going to move. You're not participating, students, students of the scripture, disciples of Christ, followers of Christ. You're not doing your homework. I'm going to count to three, and I want you to put your name in there and say Joshua Matter or Susan Matters. Are you ready? One, two, three. Yes, That's right. You matter to God. Amen. The Message Bible put it this way, but you are the ones chosen by God Chosen for the high calling of priestly work. Chosen to be a holy people. God's instruments to do his work and speak out for him to tell others of the night and day difference that he made for you. 
from nothing to something, from rejected to accepted. Uh, I think I need to read that again. I said I think I need to read that one again. Amen. Reading it from the Message Bible that simply renders more clarification. It says, but you are the ones chosen by God. Chosen for the high calling of priestly work. Now, this is not just talking about ministers. Most people just think, well, this must be the ministry, you know, the past in the pulpit. No, no, we're talking about you, you and I, the born-again believers. Come on, those who name the name of Christ, we're talking about you. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Well, that's who we're talking to today. It says here from the Message Bible, but you are the ones chosen by God. We're going to build up your spiritual self-image. How many of y'all need a spiritual lift here today? Anybody need a spiritual lift here today to find out who you are in Christ? Not, well, I can't do that. Well, I, I'm too black. I'm too white. I'm too skinny. I'm too fat. They'll never choose me. Stop it. Stop it now. You are somebody. Come on now. You matter to God. Let me say it again. You matter to God. God loves you. Let's read it again for, from the Message Bible. But you are the ones chosen by God, chosen for the high calling of priestly work, chosen to be a holy people, a separated people. God's instrument. You're God's instrument. Say, I am God's instrument. I am God's instrument. Some of you don't believe that. You think Pastor Wright is just God's instrument. No, you're a born-again believer. You are God's instrument. You are God's instrument. You are God's instrument. And he wants to play you. What sound is coming out of you? He wants to play you. He wants to play you. But you must allow him to play you or to direct your life. He wants to direct your life. He wants to use you. Come on. He wants to use you. So, But you must turn yourself over to him. Remember that old song that we used to sing? Praise team. Lord, use me, your instrument, the instrument of worship. Y'all don't go back that far. Okay, honey, they don't go back that far. <laughs> Amen. Remember that old song? That's right, we're God's instrument. Let's stay right there for a moment. You're God's instrument. Well, I ain't no preacher. No, you're God's instrument. That's not just talking about the fivefold ministry gifts of the prophet, come on, the apostle, pastor, and teacher. No, no, this is talking about all of us who name the name of Christ, young and old. He can use you when you're five years old, 10 years old, 12, 16, 20. You're God's instrument. God not only wants to use folk in the pulpit, no, 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 no. He wants to use you. You got it? Well, let me see if I can finish it. Okay. But you are the ones chosen by God, chosen for the high calling of priestly work, chosen to, to be a holy people, God's instrument to do his work. Let's stop. Boy, I can't get past this yet. To do his work, whether you are a doctor, a lawyer, school teacher, uh, 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 whatever department, secretary, uh, uh, you work for Nissan, I don't care who you work for or what you do, you're God's instrument. God wants to use you to reach people. Church is not about just coming in here and getting a little word and split. No, no. You get the word so you can share it with others. Whoever you work for, that's right. People always need prayer. Have you ever tried to ask them, can I pray with you? Most people won't turn you down. Everybody needs prayer. God's trying to use you as an instrument, not just Pastor Wright and Minister Logan and Pastor Leslie, Minister Dorian and Crandall and, and all these other ministers and preachers. No, 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 no. He wants to use everybody. Okay? Why? Because you're an instrument. God wants to use you. 
There's more to this than just coming to church. It's got to be. We're growing. We're developing. We just had our Ministry of Help seminar or workshop, whichever, which one you might want to call it, and we're growing and we're developing, learning how to reach out to the lost and dying world with the glorious gospel. That's what it means to be a Christian. A lot of us are trying to do Christianity without Christ. Christianity is not just coming to church and hooping and running around the building and then split. No, it's what we do, what we live. It's in him we live, move, and have our being. It's in everything that we do. When we do our investments, do it in the name of the Lord. When you go to work, you do it in the name of the Lord. When you at T-ball, hey, I used to witness to some of the different people, they would ask for a little prayer, this and that. When I was at my kids' game, I'm always available, Lord. I mean, y'all remember the old song, Praise and Worship Team? I'm available to you. You remember that old song, Lord, I'm available? Well, how many of you can say the same thing? Lord, I'm available. You don't have to have ministerial license. You don't need to be ordained by God. Come on now. You don't need preacher licenses. No. Let me ordain y'all right now. So what y'all need some ordination papers before you do something. Thereby, the pastor of New Beginning, I now ordain you. Go and preach. Daddy, that's all you need. I'll give you some papers when service is over with. That's all. I've been through all those ceremonies, and they're very important. I'm not making light of them, but it's just a piece of paper. The preach got to be in you. It's about you and what you going to do. The piece of paper ain't going to make you a minister, no more than the piece of paper going to make you a doctor. It's, it's about you, man. Come on, let's, let's, let's try to finish it. We're God's instruments to do his work and to speak out. When you go to work, you're not just going to work. The opportunities will come up for you to witness to other people. Get people to come to church or you witness to them and just tell them, I don't know how to do all that stuff. We have an evangelism course. We got an outreach class. Just tell them about the goodness of the Lord. The Bible says Jesus went about just doing good. Sometimes you ain't even got to say nothing. Just be a witness. Let your light so shine. Okay, let's finish this. God's instruments to do his work and to speak out for him, to tell others of the night and day difference that he's made in your life. From nothing, you were nothing, and he made you something. From being rejected to now you are what? Accepted. You're accepted into the family of God. You matter. Find a neighbor and tell them. You matter. Now turn with me to Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. Are y'all with me? Jeremiah 29 and verse 11 said, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. One translation says, to give you a bright future. A bright future. Let me read this from the Message Bible. It said, this is God's word on the subject. As soon as Babylon 70 years are up and a day before, I'll show up and take care of you as I promised and bring you back home. I know what I'm doing. I had it planned out. Plans to take care of you, not to abandon you, but plans to give you the future that you hope for. Wow, isn't that beautiful? He said, I got plans for you. Even before you were born, he had plans for your life. It's not just as we went to Africa, you know, we uh, used to have that orphanage there with close to 100 kids. And, and, and we'd go there and we would take the professionals from our church, the doctors and the RN, the LPNs, everybody who had a little profession. Okay, so your profession is not just to do work at Baptist Hospital, but your profession also is to witness to others. 
And we would take people with us, and, and, and they would be witnessing to other people while they're helping them with their mouth. The dentists, we had the dentists, and we had doctors, and, and they were witnessing the people while they were doing what they had to do with them. See, it's bigger than just you. Let me tell you, even with some of you sell homes, you're in the real estate. It's not just, just, just to do real estate, or some of you may work for Nissan, some of you may work uh, for Jackson Public Schools, some of you may work for other schools, Madison, et cetera, et cetera, right? A a but everything you do, your life should be a witness. That's the point I'm getting to. Everything you do, you should be a witness. Don't be afraid to tell other people about Jesus. And that's what the scripture is saying. You matter to God. All the time, the reason why we don't say nothing is because we don't know that we matter. We don't know. I mean, you know that the world bases its worth off of its value system. The world bases its worth off of its value system. But our worth as believers can be found in the word of God. And you know, you think about the world and their value system. Lord have mercy. It's pretty hard to match up with the world because they're looking at your color, what organization you belong to, cliques, your friends, who you know, your beauty. If you're too short, you're too tall, you're too black, you're too white, you're too yellow, too brown. The world has its own value system. And oftentimes, that's the reason why we get caught up into the world's value system. When we, as born-again believers, we get our value from the Word of God. We get our value from the Word of God, not from the world. Because when you're dealing with the world, you're going to find out that you're going to come up short. And a, a lot of people have poor self-images. Why? Because they're basing the value of their life on the world system. Come on. I mean, you got some of the people, you know, you, you, know, you read about them. They, they're trying to lose weight beyond weight so that they can be a model for Vogue or whatever magazine it might be or whatever organization it might be. And so they get over into, you know, where they're not eating at all. And so then it gets over into something bad. You know, they, they got to maintain a certain look, got to maintain their voices, they got to maintain their looks, they got to maintain this, they got to maintain that. And so you start to, trying to match yourself up with what the world is saying. Y'all wake up now and say, you can sleep at the house. Look, I've been up since 3 o'clock. Wake up. <laughs> Wake up. Yeah, so you got to be careful trying to put your value based on the world system. And oftentimes that can affect how you feel as a believer. I just don't fit in. I, you ain't supposed to fit in. You're different. We're born-again believers. We're born-again believers. We're not supposed to fit. We belong to the kingdom of God, not the kingdom of this world. We are in this world, but we're not of this world. We're in this world, but we're not supposed to be of this world. Remember what Romans chapter 12 said, come out from among them, be not conformed to this world. Because when you're trying to compare with the world, you may fall short. So we got to be so very careful. Our worth as believers can be found in the word of God. We are credibly valuable to God. Every life is precious to God. Let me say that again. Every life is precious to God. Your life matters to God. God thought that we were so valuable. Let me tell you what your value is. It's just, you know, we're taking this time to kind of build you up. Some of you don't think you all that. And you are in the spirit, in Christ. Uh, but uh, uh, we're so valuable that God sacrificed his only begotten son. He sacrificed his only. How I many of y'all would give up your only child for one of us? <laughs> I mean, it ain't happening, Pastor. It, it, well, for God, John 3, 16, right? For God so loved the world that he did what? He just gave his only, his only begotten son. And then here comes Jesus, right? The Bible says that a body was prepared for him. You get over there in Philippians, how the Bible says there that Jesus stripped himself of all his glory. 
He stripped himself of all his glory and became like men. He took off his purple robe of majesty and, and went and grabbed a towel to become a servant. He said he made himself of no reputation. Why did he do all that? For us, for you, for you. That's right, for me, for you. God loved us that much. We must have been valuable. We must have been valuable if he's going to give his only son. We must have been valuable if Jesus gave the ultimate sacrifice. He gave his life. We must have been valuable. You don't give your life just for anything. Ain't nobody just giving their life away for anybody or anything. If you're going to do that, you got to be valuable. We're talking about your value as a born-again believer. Come on now. And you can find that over in Philippians chapter 2. He stripped himself of all his glory and became a servant, became a human. He put on human flesh. The Bible says a body had to be prepared for Jesus. Why? Because he was in glory. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning. So he had to strip himself. He had to take all that glory off to come down here to us. That's right. He became the first missionary. He came all the way down here for us. Then he went through what? The Garden of Gethsemane, the place of the crushing where he was in so much agony as it were great drops of blood coming down the side of his face. Why was he doing that? For you and I. And then he went through the scourging process where they beat him with a cat of nine tails at the, at the end of that whip with bits and pieces of glass and metal. Every time it hit him, it would take out a little piece of him. Who was he thinking about? You and I. Don't tell me you ain't valuable. You need to wash that out your mouth. Jesus went through all that just for you and I. Then they tacked him up on a cross. Thank God Jesus didn't say, I don't do crosses. I ain't doing no gardens now. Y'all ain't going to tack me up. Then he told his disciples, listen here, boys, I could have called upon 12 legion of angels. Huh? Remember Peter, he got excited, cut the man's ear off and all that. And he said, Pete, put your sword up, man. Put your sword up. If you live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword. He said, did you not know, Peter? Come on now, you've been with me. Did you not know I could have called upon 12 legions? That's 72,000 angels and destroyed mankind. He said, but so that the scriptures may be fulfilled. Jesus did all that for who? For you and I. Come on. I'm telling you your value. And then in Romans chapter 5 and verse 8, let's go there. Romans chapter 5. I don't feel like the Lord really young me. I he don't answer my prayer. I don't know if my prayers even reach the ceiling. I, I just don't know. Lord Jesus, Lord, I, you don't know how much I've missed it, Pastor. I done done this and done that. I don't care what you've done. It's not about that. I'm telling you what your value is. That's why he came. Watch this. I remember this old sermon. It was an old sermon. He hung up. He was hung up for our hang-ups. <laughs> That's a sermon for one of y'all. He was hung up for what? Boy, I don't know where that came from. That's an old sermon I heard. Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. It said, but God commended his love toward us in that while we were what? Yet sinners, Christ did what? He died. There's too many Christians who have a poor self-image of themselves comparing their self to the world system. And if your mind is filled with them thoughts of worthlessness, shame, embarrassment, and low self-esteem, you got to renew your mind. It's high time to get rid of all them insecurities, huh? And being irrelevant and unimportant. It's time for us to get rid of all that. You got to be careful with this world system. Like I said, it's all based on color, size, wealth, association. Do you belong to this or do you belong to that? If you don't, you ain't about nothing. We better than you, this, that. I'm in this clique. I'm in that clique. It's got a lot to do with materialism. You mean you ain't riding around in a Range Rover? 
You ain't got no Mercedes. What you driving? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Oh, I got me a Lexus. What you riding? I got a Toyota. Well, you ain't in our club. You ain't quite ready. That's the world system. Always trying to keep up with the Joneses. That's that worldly system. Our self-worth as believers should not be based on the world value system. Once again, it should be based on the word of God and what the Lord thinks about us. That's why I text scripture. You notice there what the scripture said. He said, I know my thoughts about you. Don't try to put no words in my mouth. I know my thoughts about you. I don't have thoughts of evil, but of peace to give you an expected end. Those are the Lord's thoughts, and that's what you need to know. I want you to know today that you matter to God. You matter to God. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. You really matter to God. That's right. You matter to God. You might not think you matter to God. You mean little old me? You mean little old me, Pastor? I don't think the Lord think about me like that. He think about y'all like that. No. Come on, Ephesians chapter 2. You matter to God. You matter to God. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 said, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Note there, we are his workmanship or we are his masterpiece. One translation said, we are God's masterpiece. Wow. Do you guys see yourself as a masterpiece? Find a neighbor right now so I can get some of y'all to stay alert right here. Ask your neighbor, say, neighbor, do you realize that you are God's masterpiece? His Rembrandt. Some of y'all, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. <laughs> Some of y'all don't even believe that. That's right. You're God's masterpiece. Who said so? Scripture. See, don't base it on, oh, Pastor, you don't understand. I got a pimple over here. My hair kind of receding up in here, you know. My feet, uh, my feet too big. My head too wide. My hips too big or whatever. It, see, that's all worldly stuff. The only thing that matters is what the Lord is saying. What is the Lord saying about you? Well, he said, you're my workmanship. You're proof of my word. Woo-wee! You'll change your thought process. At least you should change. He said, you're my masterpiece. Another translation said, you're my handiwork. And if folk got problems with you, tell them, take it up with the Lord. <laughs> Take it up with the Lord. Take it up with the Lord. Why? Because he is the one that created me. I don't get my, you know, acceptance from this world. Because you're going to come up short. Because as all, watch this now. There's going to always be somebody that look better than you. That, that can play baseball better than you. That can play football better than you. That can play better than you. Go always be somebody, so you ain't going to never level up. But when you got the Lord, woo-wee. turn with me to Psalms 139. Psalms 139. So you start comparing yourself with the world. Huh. Look out. Psalms 139, verse 14. Are y'all there? He says here, I will praise thee. The psalmist says, I will praise thee for what? I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works that my soul knoweth the right well. Wow. Notice there. I am fearfully and what? Wonderfully made. Who? You. Ain't talking about me, Pastor. Well, who else is it talking about? It's talking about those who are in Christ. I'm telling you who you are. That's right. You matter to God. Your gift, your gifting. Some of you are multi-talented. Your gifting, huh? Your skill set for some of you sport fanatics. Your skill set is special. Why? Because God gave it to you. You're special. You matter to God. 
Say with me, I matter to God. Turn with me to, um, yeah, let's go to, uh, where are we at? Psalms 139. Let's back up a little bit here. Let's back up to verse 1, I believe it is. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Psalms 139, verse 1. Let, let me tell you how, let me tell you. God is interested in you. Come on now. Come on, y'all. How many have brought your shouting clothes with you? God's interested in you. That's right. You mean me? Yes, you. Couldn't be. Then who? <laughs> I think I get that from my little grandbaby, Bobo. One of them programs we'll be watching. Who, me? Yes, you. Then who? <laughs> We're talking about you. Find a neighbor and tell them, Pastor, talking about you. The Word of God's talking about you. That's right. We're talking about you. Who, me? Yes, you. That's who we're talking to today. So, so for some of my, come on, my single folk, don't you be letting some old nappy head boy or man, whichever one he think he is, or woman, tell you otherwise. And that's how you wind up getting, I'm from the hood, y'all, so, you know, I grew up in the project. That's how you wind up jacked up. Okay, because your self-image. Maybe father wasn't there to be there to, to build you up. and There was no one there. I don't know. There's different scenarios, you know what I'm saying? And, and then and nowadays, and no offense, I know when I talk with my kids, you know, most of them, their friends, their fathers are not present. I knew y'all wouldn't say nothing on that one. I felt that one. And, and, and so the girls need that acceptance. The dad need to... Do I got any pops up in here? I got any fathers up in here? You got to make your daughter feel accepted. All that. Or any old fool will come along and mess your daughter up and you're ready to kill him. Now, I'm not advocating killing nobody. I'm just saying. You got to be kidding. You listening to this big peanut head rascal trying to tell you that you're not nobody? Yeah. You mess around, start cussing up in church. I know we on Facebook. I ain't cussing. I ain't cussing. You go tell my daughter she ain't nothing. I ain't cussing. Come on now, guys. And so when you don't know who you are, that's why it's so very important that we find out who we are in Christ, that there be somebody to affirm you build you up, all that good stuff is so very important so you don't let some peanut head come in or some tight tail gal come in. Mess your head up. You ain't all that, Billy. Who you think you are, Kevin? Ralph? Steve? You ain't nothing. You, you got to be kidding. I wish somebody would tell my daughter that. You, you done lost your ever living my, you got to be careful with your words, you know. You been there slipped up and said, bleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you saved now. You're supposed to be sanctified. But when you don't know your value, that's where we're going, guys. So just sit still. I'm going to let you out in just a minute. Hold your horses. Amen. When you don't know your value, you get in trouble. As a man or as a woman. Are you with, that's why we got to spend time where? In the word of God. And you're building yourself up. Are you with me? All right. Psalms 1. Y'all thought I forgot about it. Verse 1. Psalms 139, verse 1. O oh Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Boy, the Lord is really in us, ain't he? He's watching us, right? Even right now, he's watching. You know, the Bible says that his eyes roam to and fro throughout the entire earth. Are y'all with me? That's what the scripture said. He's watching us. Why? He's interested in us. How you know that? He said, thou hast searched me and you know me, Lord. Lord, you know me. Thou knowest what? My down sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar of off. 
You can't lie to Jesus. He knows you. He's interested in us. Are y'all with me? Shoot over there, I believe. Let me make sure. And no, nah, we didn't. We read that one. Okay. Let's go to this one here. Um, Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. That's why it's very important. You build yourself up. You better, because boy, people will compare you with the world. It's amazing. And you, you're going to find yourself, it's going to be hard to match up with the world. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 says, according as he has chosen us, he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Wow. In other words, God had us on his mind before the world was created. Boy, that's something. God's interested in me, yes. You matter. You matter. God had a special plan and purpose for your life. Now let me build you up some more. Go with me to 1 John 4, 4. I mean, you know, we look a whole lot better in Christ than out of Christ. So if we want to increase our value and our self-image, we need to find out who we are in Christ. 1 John 4, 4. 1 John 4, 4. Let me build you up. Let's find out who we are. Not what the world is trying to say about us. What other people, it don't matter what other people are saying. What did the Lord say? That's the only thing that matters. How does the Lord feel about you? That's the most important thing. I said that is the most important thing is what does the Lord feel about you? First John 4.4. 4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because what? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He's the greater one. You got the greater one on the inside of you. I said, you got the greater one. You got God on the inside of you. You're the temple of the Holy Ghost. Have that really ever dawned on you? I, I think today that that revelation dawned on us, the Bible said, know ye not, you're the temple of the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, God lives in us. He does. Whether you believe that or not, he'll talk to you. Just as quiet, you know, you can be just going about your business and the Lord will be talking to you. And for some of you students, the Lord will talk to you. Quit talking to the world and quit listening to what Pookie trying to tell you and what Shanique was trying to tell you. Forget them. What is the Lord saying to me? He said, I'm the greater one on the inside of you. Huh? Let's see what else. Let's see what else here. How about Romans chapter 8? Romans chapter 8. And these are the things that you got to, young people, you got to get this inside your spirit or some pookie will come right along and mess you up. Mess you up. That's right. I'll give you some value. I almost said something behind that. I'm glad I didn't. I'm, I'm going to just say the second part of it. Please. I ain't going to say the first part. I'm going to just say, please. What y'all laughing at? I just said, please. Y'all figure out what the first half of it is. And you got to know these things. And that way you don't walk into a pothole. And then you trying to let Pookie give you value. Or Shanique will give you value. Yeah. What kind of job you got? Well, you know, I just work at McDonald's. Oh, you ain't ready for this. Say what? You ain't good enough. Oh, really? You allowing the world to give you your value and you don't measure up. It's all about who you are in Christ. And that's where you get two people coming together who know who they are in Christ. It makes a wonderful marriage. 
because see now we're building each other up in the Lord. Even if we don't quite measure, well, you begin to call those things which be not as though they were until they are. Your husband might not measure up to it, but you start speaking the word on. Your wife might not measure up to it, but you start speaking the word of God. Father, I just thank you right now that my husband right now that he comes to church with me, I thank you that he's a mighty man of God. He's a mighty man of valor. I thank you, Lord, that he blessed coming in, blessed going out, blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed in the basket. Lord, I thank you everything his hands set his hands to do shall and will prosper. Start speaking the word. Now, when you got two born-again believers speaking the word over each other, now, you know, we might not all measure up to a certain situation, but when you start speaking the word of God, the word of God changes things. The word of God rearranges things. Then all of a sudden, your man will start stepping up to the plate. Your woman will start stepping up to the plate. Thank you, Father, I got a loving husband. Thank you, Father, I got a loving wife. Thank you, Father. And, and this thing, then, then, then you look at him. Look out, Billy, you're changing, boy. You better watch yourself. Things start changing. That's right. We should do the same thing over our children. Speak the word of God. Not, not just worldly stuff. All that worldly stuff. Even more than worldly stuff ought to be God first. Build them up in the word of God. Yeah, I was just talking with my son dropping them off at school. I was telling them, y'all need to hear this. Y'all need to hear it. Pastor about to unload. I'll tell you, I said, boy, you don't realize who your daddy is. You know me as your father. Let me tell you who I was coming up. I was a little boy that stuttered so bad I couldn't even say my name. They would ask me, and what is your name? I would, oh, man, God. And some of y'all laugh at it, you know. <laughs> It's jacked up. I mean, it was like, oh, man. I was an athlete. And just as long as I didn't have to say certain letters, vowels. Now, I wouldn't have no problem with Michael, Stephen. But when it got to K, oh, Jesus. K, man. I would tell a good friend of mine, tell him Kevin. And he, yeah, that's Kevin. That's my dog. That's Kevin. I was scared. I was fearful. Fearful to stand up in school? I mean, that y'all don't know the feeling. Young folk, are y'all listening? Well, Pastor, you don't understand what I'm going through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did I go through? Shoot. Tell me what you mean by what you go through. The mess I went through, I went to hell, man. It was hard to sit there and couldn't say my name. It was hard I couldn't say 80%. 80, that 8 wouldn't get out right. I was fearful wound up becoming, even in elementary school, the vice president of a 95% white school. They chose me to be vice president. I would make speeches, all of that. And so I was sitting there explaining that to my son, you know. I said, boy, you, sh you don't want to know how I was. I came up. It was, it, man, I was sweat profusely because I knew I had to get up there and, good God, dog it. Mm. A real good athlete. I ain't going to lie about that one. I got you on that one. I was a bad boy. I was a man among boys. That's who I was in sports. Right? But when they came to talking, they got me. They got me. Next thing you know, I'm captain of the sport team. Right? Next thing you know, I'm at the pep rally. You know, we always had the pep rally. Everybody at the school would come to the auditorium. They got me up there talking, introducing all the players. The stutterer. Then I mess around and got filled with the Holy Ghost. I begin to tell my son, what changed Kevin Wright was the Holy Ghost. I begin to speak the word of God over me. Then all of a sudden, I'll be, look, I'm up here preaching. I didn't, I'll be speaking, I'll speak all over the United States and, and on foreign soil. Thousands of people. That's what I do because of the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost empowered me. I began to speak the word over me, and while I was speaking the word, I was stuttering. I th 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 thank you, Lord. The, the greater is he that, 
I know it, it, it's funny. God, I mean, hey, it was like, who cared? But then after a while, that stuff started leaving. Some of y'all got some problems in your life, and you ain't never going to be right until you turn your life over to the Lord. It ain't going to be right. I don't care what school, what group, organization you join, your life ain't going to be right. I'm going to tell you why. I'm just telling you, over 40 years of ministry, of ministering to thousands of people from Michigan to Mississippi and around the globe. Let me tell you something. It's going to require the Holy Spirit to get you, to get your little tail straightened out. Because you got some issues that little counseling session ain't going to fix it. Little counseling session wasn't going to fix me. I went to a speech therapist. My parents had me in there. Yeah, did I? Did I? Put a Band-Aid on it. But I needed the Holy Ghost because I was because I wanted to be like my mom who has passed on. She stuttered real big, so I would be around my mama all the time. You know, Dad was there, but I was around my mama a lot, so I just wanted to be like my mama. And so I pick up on my mama. I would giggle a little bit with mama, spit the die, whoop y'all. I said, Oh Lord. And so I picked up on all that, you know, and, and I started stuttering like mama. It, it jumped up on me. None of my brothers and sisters stutter. None of them. Watch this. I'm about to say something. Listen, you got to catch this. Are y'all listening? Adult problems are youth problems never solved. You'll go on and become an adult, and you still got them problems in your life. You still tripping. You still tripping out. You think that as you get a little older, that stuff will run away from you? It don't. It stay with you. I'm just being honest with you. I got my fellas up in here to back me. It is what it is. When we have our men's team, we just, hey, it's like the nights around the round table. We all got issues. And we working together to straighten this mess out. Because that's the only thing that matters when we straighten all this. Ain't nobody perfect up in this building. Man, one of us. There's only one person. His name is Jesus. Everybody got some issues. I was watching Creflo Dollar the other day. He said, Every, everybody got some issues. Everybody got some issues. Creflo crazy. <laughs> he was singing it, you know. He was, everybody got some issues. And it's going to require the Holy Spirit to come out of there. Issues in your mind, issues in your body. It could be your health. I'm telling you, it's going to require the Holy Spirit. It could be your big mouth. It could be you around the wrong people. You're hanging around the wrong folk. You're in the wrong crowd. It could be you can't keep a job, a J-O-B-B. It could be a whole lot of stuff. You don't know how to treat women. You don't know how to treat men. Come on, there's a whole list we can go down now. It'll touch some of all of them. One of them issues is going to touch us. The only way out of it is the Holy Ghost. You got to yield your tongue to the Holy Ghost. Amen. Drinking, smoking weed. <laughs> Never done it. All my friends did. Most of them are dead. One guy shot in the chest. He was sporting another girl, another girl's, uh, another guy's girlfriend. Guy walked up on him, saw it off shotgun, boom, blew a hole in his chest the size of a plate. We all at the funeral. We grew up together. Had another friend of mine. Man, just all my friends then got killed some kind of way. Going to college, riding a motorcycle. His mama told him, that motorcycle going to be the death of you yet. That was a real good friend of mine. We played ball together. Football, baseball, all of it, basketball. That boy was a standout. He was all state. Big boy, about 6'5". He ride his motorcycle going to U of M, Michigan, one of them schools. Somebody ran the light, hit him. He went up in the air, fell on the handlebar, crushed his whole entire chest. I'm at the funeral. Had another friend of mine, all-state football, linebacker. Mess around out jogging. Truck hit him while he was at college jogging, working out. Truck hit him. I did the funeral closed casket. It destroyed him. Cause you can eat, it, he was just nothing. You want to talk some more? And the list go on. 
The list goes on. I didn't see so many tragedies. It's going to require the Holy Ghost. Born again believers, it's going to require the Holy Ghost. You don't know how to control your tongue. It's going to require the Holy Ghost. You don't know how to control your body, your thought life, all that stuff. There's a lot of stuff out there. That's life. I'm not so excited about all the junk. I'm excited about yielding my tongue to the Holy Ghost. You can come out of whatever you're in. Yield yourself to the Holy Ghost. You got to build yourself up who you are in Christ. In Christ, in him, in whom? In Christ, in him, in whom? Got to build yourself up. And that's what we're doing. We're building you up. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Nay, in all these things, what? We are more than conquerors through who? Through him. Through Christ. We're more than conquerors. We're more than conquerors. We're more than conquerors. Come on now. How about Acts chapter 17 as we wind down? Acts chapter 17. It's about time for me to shut down because y'all done got quiet. I know when to stop, yo. <laughs> Verse 28. I'm just being honest with you. Life is life. Hey, everybody, there's always something, guys. But you can break through with Jesus. You got to find out who you are in Christ. You got to find out who, who you are in Christ. Men becoming lovers of themselves. Women becoming lovers of themselves. All this stuff. You can break through. It's not the sin. It's the love of God. When you fall in love with Jesus, when you fall in love with Jesus, you can break through all this, but you got to find out who you are in Christ. Are y'all with me? With our, one of the biggest things right now is your emotions, the mind, the soul. That's a big issue, especially among women, is that mind, that mind. You can get a breakthrough. You can get a breakthrough. You know, my staff and I, we go visit people that, in, that are in special institutions and things of that nature, and, and they, they just need a breakthrough. And certain things going to require fasting and prayer. Get a breakthrough. Yield to the Holy Ghost. Had a, I was just talking with my sister who lives in Kissimmee, Florida. Kissimmee, Florida. And a good friend of theirs had a mental thing. I, I don't know exactly what it was, but let me tell you something. She got a breakthrough. I mean, she was out there. God bless her, wonderful woman. And that mental thing just snap, snap. And she started doing different stuff, you know what I mean? But she just got that breakthrough. I don't know, it's probably been years. She got that breakthrough. And she's no longer like that now. She's back to the way she originally was before that mental thing kicked in. Let me tell you, that's, that's some serious stuff, guys. When you read throughout the Gospels, you'll see Jesus didn't have much problems with people physically. You know, arms, legs, this, that. But when it came to mental, you don't read much about people getting set free mentally. Uh, but Jesus went about doing good, healing all. But it requires the Holy Ghost, spending time with the Holy Ghost, praying in the Spirit, praying with the understanding. Finding out who you are in Christ, in him, in whom, in Christ. So we found out that we're more than conquerors. Then Acts 17, verse 28, said, it's for in him we live, and in him we move, and in him we have our being. See, it's all about in him, who we are in Christ. How about 2 Corinthians chapter 5? We're about to close. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And verse 17, therefore, if any man be what? In Christ. He is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. How about Revelations chapter 12? Revelations chapter 12. 
And these are scriptures that we need to confess. I know every morning, just about every, just about every morning, I can almost safely say every morning, I hear my wife in there just quoting scriptures. I mean, she's got her prayer box. And, and boy, she got it. You know, she got the scriptures on healing. She got the scriptures for her family. She got the scriptures for her children. All these things are necessary to quote these scriptures. And you just take 30 minutes out of a day. You got to get up a little early and, and get your 30 minutes in and, and just start confessing the scriptures. And, and then she's got one of my handkerchiefs, one of my handkerchiefs from when I preach, a just sweaty handkerchief, and, and she's got it in her prayer box, and she'll put it on herself, and she'll pray for her husband. She's got all these scriptures, you know, just speaking the word of God, calling those things which be not as though they were until they are, until it actually happens. You know, the Bible says in Hebrews, hold fast to your confession of faith. You got to hold, Pastor, I'm tired. I've been praying for my son, my daughter. I, I've been praying for my brother, my sister. I'm just tired of praying. Hold fast to your confession. Hold fast, that's something mean. Hold fast to what you're saying. You got to hold fast. You got to keep going. With the attitude, and I'm, I'm going to close, with the attitude of this, if it take me a thousand years, I'll keep confessing until the change happens. That's the attitude you got to have. Some of you just having new babies and all this, maybe a little something is going on, you better start confessing the scripture. And, and, and then at school, they're trying to say your child is this, a, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. You get what I'm talking about. Amen. You better get in the word of God. Start confessing. Now, it's good to go get a little counsel, a little wisdom from you. got social workers and all that, right? That, let me tell you, but what's more important is getting in that word. Because, see, them social workers, they'll deal with certain things. I, I had a social worker coming up as a kid with my speech that was working with me. I don't know if you want to call them a social worker, but they were professional, teaching me how to say certain syllables and all that, you know, and, and, and <laughs> man, I th th man, you got to get your tongue behind your tongue, all this. Oh, Lord, I'm an athlete, man. I'm going to play sports. I ain't, I ain't going to be talking to nobody. Too. I don't need all this mess. And look, and look what I'm doing. So I went to therapy, all that stuff for my tongue, loose my tongue. So I started reading about people like, have you ever heard of this person? James, James Earl Jones. He from Mississippi, ain't he? That's right. People pay him for his voice. That voice is so profound and boom, that James Earl Jones. <laughs> people pay him just for his voice. Uh... Oral Roberts. Have you ever heard of Oral Roberts? And there's so many more people you wouldn't know who were stutterers. So, hey, every now and then I might try to slip up a little bit. To, you know, that, that, hey, I just laugh. What you doing, boy? What you think you're doing? What you doing? <laughs> it's no biggie. Before I used to sweat, fall out. Oh, Jesus. Some of you before. You're scared to do public speaking. You'll get up there and put your feet together. Don't ever do that. You should put them feet together. You're going to faint. They teach you that in public speaking. Don't put them feet together. You put them feet together. You done then fell out. And you don't even stutter. Uh, I would say something else, but uh, um, some of my family members might be watching. But I, I, I've known some folk that got so nervous, they started giggling before they speak. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they don't stutter, but they got nervous. <laughs> Facial stuff started happening. <laughs> and they don't stutter. That's that fear in them. That's right. What fears do you have? It's going to require the Holy Ghost. Fearful to get up in front of people. I'm quite sure I'm looking at Minister Dorian here. Before she got into what she was doing, working with uh, uh, her uh, very large organization that she works for in management. <laughs> I guarantee the devil talked to her. 
Ooh, Jesus, I got to talk to all these employees. Ooh, <laughs> Lord have mercy. I guarantee you the devil got it. Oh, I want to talk to all these folk. I mean, oh, Jesus. You had to conquer that thing. I look at Minister Logan. They, these ladies have been with my wife and I a long time. Y'all don't look. One day I'm going to have Sandra to give her testimony. <laughs> Lord Jesus. Sandra was jacked up. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> Lord have mercy. Sandra got a world of a testimony. And she messed around uh, the upshot of the story. Messed around and got a hold to the word of God. She came to the church, got that word. It revolutionized her life. Ooh, <laughs> the story she could tell you about her brothers and sisters, how they jacked her up and this and that. I'm thinking, I'm thinking about the swing, Sandra. Oh, you remember the swing? <laughs> Boy, they, oh, y'all just don't get it. Y'all don't know what we've gone through. You don't know what we've gone through. It required the Lord to get us to do what we do, man. It's going to require the Lord to get you. Some of you are thinking now, oh, I got this situation. I got that situation. I got to deal with this. Well, how do I speak to folk who strong? Strong. That's how you talk to them. If if they're strong, no. I told you, no. You tell them, well, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I mean, you got to speak strong. However they came at you is how you got to come at them. Because they don't understand softness. They don't understand soft. You got to be firm with them. If they're firm, you be firm. You learn that in management. You be firm. In a loving way. No, we're not doing that. We're going to do this. Let's go. That's it. Because if you got people, they might, their personality might be stronger than yours. They'll run over you. They'll run over you. But it requires the Holy Ghost to teach you. I remember when I was coming up in ministry, and then I'll stop, guys. I'm done. Uh, <laughs> oh, Lord, I'm sitting there with Bishop Butler, right? And he wanted to see what I got. He knew I was a baseball player, all that. I mean, he, he'll tell you, you know. And uh, he said, read these announcements. We in the office. I don't even know if I shared this with my wife. I'm not sure. And him and his secretary was there, and, and, and they, 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 we, it was three of us, right? Read these now. Let me see what this boy got, all right? Hey, I, I wasn't no full-time minister or nothing like that. And, Lord, I looked at the sheet. Y'all know how Sandra, she gets up here and she does the announcements, right? Shoot, I, I started out pretty good. And on Wednesday, we're going to be having men of valor. And then on Thursday, we're going to have, oh, it hit me. I said, oh, no, Jesus, it got me, Lord. And uh, my pastor just looked at me. He had a little grin on his face. He didn't grin too long because he had the same problem growing up. And you know what he told me? And it helped me tremendously. He said, ain't nothing wrong with you, boy. He said, <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with you. You just shy. I'm going to keep putting you up. Uh, I was like, the devil is a liar. You ain't putting me up there to do no announcements. Shoot, now I'm up there. Why y'all laughing at me right now? Y'all ain't right. Chris, you ain't right laughing at me, man. <laughs> I mean, hey, that's the problem issue I had, you know. I, I did pretty good. I, I did it quick. I just jumped on in there. And yes, on Wednesday, we'll be doing this and that. And then that thing hit me. I said, God. And he said, no, I'm going to keep putting you up till you get it right. I sweat it like a dog. Sweat like a hound dog. Are y'all learning from me? You don't sit them down. You put them up till they get it right. Kept putting me up. Kept putting me up. Kept putting me up. Spit it out. He'd be in the back on the stage. Spit it out, son. It's all right. I'm up on the platform in front of 10,000 people. Literally. 5,000, 10,000 people. Mm. Yeah, dug it. Mm. It was so bad. I'm telling off on myself, Alonzo. You didn't even know these things. 
I had it so bad. Watch this, Mish. I changed the vowel on your butt. <laughs> I want to say Kevin, I say Bill. <laughs> I changed the whole vowel. See, y'all didn't know that, see? But I stayed in the Holy Ghost, Noreen. I changed the whole vowel. We're going down the street. I get to, we're going down the uh, valley. <laughs> I'm just being honest. I'm being honest. But I kept pushing. Kept pushing. People laughed. Like y'all laughing. People around. But see, I was still an athlete, though. I handled my business on the field. So that kind of made up for some of it. Kev, boy, you nice, boy. God, tell. Yeah, it's like that. Next thing you know, I'm captain of the team. Talking. Now, next week, we play coo 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 cool cool high. <laughs> and, 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 see, back then, you know, you know and, 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 and we're going to take them out. Uh, see, I pushed that out because I could say the O, out. So I, I was learning. I'm teaching you guys something now. Got to keep going. Some of you have been wanting to quit. You are somebody. You're special to God. Don't quit. What if I would have quit? Thousands of people would not have heard the word like y'all have heard. Wherever my wife and I go, we was out this morning, up at 3 or 30 in the morning, dealing with somebody who just passed away. They called us. We got there by, what, 5 or something? I don't know, 5.30. And uh, we got dressed, showered. And, and man, I tell you, you got to do what you got to do. Went in there and prayed with the family. The whole entire family came in, people weeping, crying. They do what they do when you lost your mother, teenager, young adults, and grown folk. Her, her what, sister, and all of them in there, it was it's a mess. You know what I mean? It's, it's there. And they, I prayed with them. Didn't split a verb. There's a lot of people didn't even know I stuttered. I've been on television, on Facebook, this, that. People don't even know it. That's when you're under the anointing. And when you under, when you leave that anointing, sometimes I'll go back to <laughs> to my wife. Okay, honey, hang in there. <laughs> but now I just laugh. I'll just change the, the, the whole vowel on you, Lonzo. Lonzo, are we gonna go fit, bowling? I meant to say fishing, right? We gonna go bowling? Whoa, 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 hold on, Bishop. I thought you said uh, fish. Yeah, that <laughs> fish. You, you guys understand what I mean, right? I changed the whole vowel on you. Fool with me. I changed the vowel on you. That's because I didn't got over that. I don't even think about that no more. When I'm in a crowd with people, when I'm in these big business meetings with some of these secular companies and stuff. I always, I'm giving you clues now. Boy, y'all don't know too much. I always introduce myself first. I get it over with. Because I don't want to get caught where, let's go around the table. You know, it's 50 folk, right? And then I'm the last one, right? And you said, yep, there it is, Lord Jesus. So I start out, all right, hey, everybody, hey, I'm Kevin Wright. I thought out first, Kevin Wright. I passed the so-and-so church. There it is. Kept him right, kept him right, kept him right. There it is. Well, we already know who he is, so I ain't got to get caught where they go around the circle and then it, bam, you the last one, you know, and the tricks of the trade. <laughs> Y'all got it? You don't have to be fearful. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared. A lot of young people's Scared of college. What's going on in there? Give it your best. 
I'm going to give you one scripture that helped me to get through my tongue, my speech thing. Boy, I saw that scripture. Help me, Lord. Help me. Such as I have, give I thee. In other words, I'm going to give you what I got. There it is, and I'm gone. It's all I could do. It's all I could do. I didn't give you what I got. Like it, lump it, or leave it. That's it. Such as I had, give I thee. You get that attitude, I'm going to give it my best shot. Hey. And for some of you, give it your best shot in the Lord. Put the Lord first. Y'all get something out of this message? You matter to God. You matter to God. You matter to God. That's it. I've stood before the Vice President of the United States. President. I mean, yeah. Uh, we had Barack Obama was at Jackson State a few, few years back. How many Jackson State folk we got up in here? Look at here. I was back there in the curtain. I got back there. It was just me and Barack and my wife. He wasn't president yet. And he walked back there, Secret Service, all them folks standing around. And oh, they staring at you. And we just got to talking. He wasn't president yet. I've been around some very important people. I've been around wealthy, rich folk. I don't think nothing about them. I think what I got is just as good as what they got. They say, I got this, I got that, and they literally got it right. Shoot, I just say, yeah, shoot. I'm blessed coming in, blessed going out. All my needs are met. I serve a God that own all this. What you got, a yacht? My God created the ocean. You got to have a little swag. Spiritual swag. It wasn't me. Uh, can you pray for me? Stop it. Have a little swag. Well, I got yachts and all that. Good. Well, my daddy owned the, he created the ocean for your yachts to get on. Well, I got a 10,000 square foot house. Yeah. Look at here. I got a mansion. I do. It's in glory. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you, you got to have a little swag. Well, you can't want, I ain't got nothing. <laughs> No. Y'all see me up here singing a little bit? Just shoot, I flip a little bit. Give you what I got, such as I have, have I? That's where I get that from. Such as I have. Now, I ain't singing. I might hit the bold note, uh, Vince. I may hit a bold note. Well, you just going to have to live with it, Vince. I'm going to hit a bold note. <laughs> hey, at least I tried. Uh, see, that's all we're asking you to do. Try. Going on out there. Make it happen. Father, we thank you today. Thank you for this word, Lord. Lord, you've taught us many different things here today. Lord, we just thank you now. Perhaps there might be someone here that don't know Jesus Christ as a Lord and personal Savior. Whether you watch it by Facebook or you live here with us. You know, the word of God says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For whosoever, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hey, I would love to say a prayer with you today. And I'm going to ask those who are watching by Facebook to just repeat after me, and I'm going to ask everybody else to, to pray with me as well. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I come to you today as humble as I know how. Lord, I just heard in your word that if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord, and if I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead, Lord, you said I'll be born again. So right now, Lord, I confess with my mouth that Jesus is right now my Lord, Savior, and Master. And I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. On the third day, I receive you into my life. Now, make something wonderful out of my life. 
Jesus' name. Now, perhaps there might be someone here today. You're here in this room, and you want us to sit down with you and just show you a few scriptures. If that's you, and you want me to pray with you right now, my heads are bowed, eyes are closed. I want you to lift your hands now. Maybe I just feel led to pray for people with fears. If that's you, stand right where you're at. You ain't got to come down here. Just stand right where you're at. Hey, just be, hey, I would, hey, I'd stand if it was me. You got some fear in your life, your fear of this. How about fear of man? Fear of public speaking? Fear of going to school? You know, fearful of driving? I've met people like that. If that's you, just stand. I'm not going to ask you to come down front. We're just going to stretch our hands toward you and pray. Now, you cannot say that you didn't have the opportunity. Some of you fearful of life. There's so much hell going on in this earth right now. I know for a fact a lot of young people are fearful right now. Like, man, what's going to happen next? Some of them scared to go to school. What if this happened and that happened? It's just a lot of fear out there. I mean, people getting killed going to the grocery store. Y'all remember what happened at that grocery store? I think it was on the East Coast. Some nut coming in and just start shooting. It's just a lot of fear in the earth right now. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and a sound mind. Is there someone else? We just gonna stretch our hands towards you, but I need for you to stand. If that's you, you got a fear. Fear, I ain't gonna never become successful in life. I know there's gotta be some young folk and you're in college. You trying to figure out what am I gonna do? Mom and daddy saying this and saying that. Man, I don't know what I want to do. I really don't know what I want to do. Man, I'm fearful. I, I might not make it. I'll be stuck sitting at the house with mom and daddy all my life. I need to pray for these people, I'm telling you. It seems to me, it seemed good. The Holy Ghost is dealing with fears right now. It seemed good. All right. Now. Saints, I want you to lift your head up, open your eyes, stretch your hands toward the person that's near you. Stretch your head, you don't have to touch them, just stretch your hands toward them and let's pray. If there's a lady right here, I need some of y'all to stretch your hands toward her now. We got some young fellas over here, I need y'all, some of you adults back there. Yeah, stretch your hands toward these folks. Father, we just thank you right now. For you said in your word, you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and a sound mind. Right now, we speak to you, fear. Go! Go! No fear here. We're not fearful of the virus. We're not fearful of the monkey pox or whatever. The, the gorilla pox, the ape pox, the lion pox. We ain't scared of none of that mess. Ain't nothing new under the sun. We're going to continue to live our lives with wisdom. We'll walk with wisdom. So we bind those fears right now in the name of Jesus and we command them, go, go, leave now in the name of Jesus. Be free. Whom the Son has set free is free indeed. So be it in the name of Jesus. Let's give my hand clap. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hey man, I tell you. Oh boy. I don't know why I keep on hearing these last days. You're going to have to do it by the Holy Ghost. I done told you. I done told y'all. You're going to have to do it by the Holy Ghost. Normal ways ain't going to do it. Normalcy, if there's such a word. <laughs> is, is, is it? Normalcy ain't going to do it. Quit trying to be normal. It's going to require the Holy Spirit. It's going to require, listen, it's going to require the Holy Spirit to raise your kids because of what has come upon this earth. What the Bible said, in the last day, young men's hearts shall fail them because of what has come upon this earth. So it's going to require the Holy Ghost. It's going to require the Holy Ghost to do business. They're trying now to go to one world currency. There's a lot going on in that financial world right now. There's a lot going on, y'all. It's a lot, and you got to listen to the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will tell you how to invest, what to do, what to connect to. You guys follow what I'm saying? 
You got to follow the Holy Spirit. You got to listen to the Lord. Pray and the Lord will talk to you. What investment to do? What to do this? And who to marry? You need to follow the Holy Ghost. Follow the Holy Spirit on who to marry. All this. You, you just need to follow the Holy Spirit, guys, in these last days because of what is coming into this earth right now, okay? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We thank you. We thank you. Honey? Just want to admonish you, all those who stood up for fear and all those who wanted to stand up but you were too fearful to stand up. The Lord sees and he knows. That prayer is for you as well. But I just wanted, the Spirit of God was just saying to my heart that fear is false evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. And he said to me to admonish you all, you got to face it down. Whatever you're fearful about, you got to face it down. You heard Pastor when he was talking about him stuttering, he would have never overcame that if he didn't face it down. He had to get up and do something. So whatever that fear is, whatever that is thing that keeps coming to you and making you feel uh, intimidated, Satan is a liar. He knows the potential that you have in you. He knows that you are dynamite. And once you face that down, you'll see that, man, how did I let that stop me all this time? Fear is false evidence appearing real. So whatever the fear is, face it down. Praise the Lord, everybody. Well, it's opportunity to prosper, amen. Glory to God, amen, hallelujah. Prepare your hearts to sow into that word, amen. Glory to God, God is so good, and he knows exactly what we all need, amen. Praise God, and God supplies every need that we have, no matter what it is. And as you are preparing uh, to give, you probably have uh, already an offering envelope, praise the Lord, but you can give three ways, amen. There are three ways that you can sow, amen. You can, of course, uh, complete the envelope that you have there uh, that have been provided for you uh, by um, our ushers and our greeters, but also you can give uh, uh, through PayPal, and that is newbeginningsplorsclc.org, amen, or you can give by Cash App, which is New Beginnings SCLC, so, or you can mail it in, if those of you are viewing by Facebook, uh, you can mail it in. Uh, also, and you can mail your offering in to P.O. Box 320658. That's Flowood, Mississippi, 39232. Amen. Praise God. Uh, the verse of scripture is over in Luke chapter 6 and verse 38. It says to give, and, it, and God will give back to us good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto our bosom. And we give uh, according to uh, what God has given us because he gives seed to the sower. And we have been taught it's not about equal giving, but it's about your commitment to give. Amen. So if you would lift your offerings up and we'll go ahead and pray over them. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for giving us seed to sow. You told us in your word, Father, in the name of Jesus, over in Malachi chapter 3, that, a uh, Father God, that you will open up the windows of heaven and pour us out blessings that won't be room enough to receive. And not only will you open up those windows, Father, but you will rebuke the devourer for our sake. Thank you, Father, for the tithing benefits, and we receive them by faith. So we're, now we release our giving unto you. And angels, go forth and bring us that which we have need of, not just for ourselves, but for also for the kingdom. In Jesus' name, all in agreement, say amen. Praise God. Before we release the uh, ushers to, uh, so you can follow our direction.